Meanwhile, the one-game suspension of Odell Beckham Jr. was upheld by the NFL, and he will not play in Sunday night's game in Minnesota. Beckham apologizing for his actions, saying this in a prepared statement. I owe some people an apology. I wasn't raised to act like I did the other day. I am not here to make excuses for my conduct. This isn't about anything that was said or done to me. This is about my behavior, and I am responsible for my behavior. People expect better from me. I expect better from myself. Stephen A., you buying ODB's apology? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, listen. <clears throat> First of all, let me say this, and I feel the need to say this because this is not about Odell Beckham Jr., what I'm about to say. This is about all of these professional athletes. What happened to just looking into a camera and just speaking your piece? I mean, you know, to me, that, that, that's clearly a statement written by the PR department or whether it's his PR or the team's PR or I don't know, but it, 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 that, that, just, that, just, that just rubs me the wrong way. It ain't that damn hard. It, it really isn't to just look into the camera and be like, look, man, I messed up. That's not who I am. That's not how I was raised. I didn't. I, I, I was selfish that day. I got caught up. My bad. I mean, it's just that simple. You know, and not only that, for it to come days later, it's like, really? It, it, was that all necessary? You know, I mean, it, it, it was clear that he was wrong. It was clear that he was excessive, but it was also clear that he wasn't the only one at fault here, which is why Josh Norman got fined. You know, and, and so we, we, here we are debating and going back and forth. I'm not talking about just us, this show, every show, every network going back and forth about the character or character flaws of Odell Beckham Jr. Ain't nothing wrong with this brother. He's big time. He can ball. He got caught up because they, Josh Norman and the Panthers got into his head. He reacted wrongly, okay? He should not have done what he did. And as a result, because of it, he's penalized. And in some respects, some would say that's partially why the Giants may have lost this game. It happens. It's no big deal. They make it a big deal because the first order of business is to live in denial, then hide, then come out and address the issue. But you got to do it through PR and all of this other stuff because you got to make sure it's worded just correctly or whatever. I mean, it's, it, it, I, I believe that Odell Beckham Jr. made a mistake because he let Josh Norman and the Panthers get in his head. I believe that that was a mistake. I believe that he was so preoccupied with all of that stuff that he forgot about his teammates. It was a mistake. It wasn't a big deal. But it's situations like this that make it big because think about this, Skip. If Odell Beckham Jr. had sat at his locker after the game and literally said, man, I messed up. I got distracted. They ticked me off, got inside my head. Shouldn't have let it happen. My bad, y'all. I messed up. This is on me. I'm sorry. That would have been it. There would have been nothing to talk about. Now he might have gotten suspended, but that would have been it. We would have talked about it Monday morning. Outside of that, we wouldn't have even addressed it. But it's been a week-long saga, all because the default position appears to be for the modern-day athlete to hide. And it's, and, it's, and it's actually, you know, it's marvelous when you think about it because, it, it, it's, Skip, I, I, I consider it tantamount to our legal system. You sit up there and, let's say, for example, a, a, a cop gives you a speeding ticket. Well, you know what? The court's going to get their money. Or you got to hire a lawyer to defend yourself so you don't have to pay, but the lawyer going to get their money, but somebody going to get paid, and either way, it's going to cost you. But yeah. it's almost like people find ways to keep themselves relevant. If you messed up, own up. You don't need representatives. You don't need the Players Association. You don't need giants or your own personal PR. You don't need all of this stuff. All you need to do is man up and be like, I messed up. My bad, my fault, won't yep. happen again. I got distracted today. And unfortunately, this is much ado, much ado about nothing because he's not a bad guy. He just got, he's a spectacular young player. He just made a mistake. But he is the one that contributed to making it bigger than what it is because he's been hiding all week. And now you issue a statement. I believe the statement is accurate. But I also believe... He comes across like he's hiding because anybody can have, shoot, any of us can get somebody to write a statement for us. Anybody. Yep. How come you can't just look in the camera and be like, my bad, it won't happen again? I don't understand it. I really don't.
I love everything you just said. I hadn't thought of it exactly that way, but I applaud you for what you just said. You're right. When I read these statements from Odell, they had the faint ring or aroma of publicist or lawyer or maybe combination of both. Now, is Odell capable of, yes, he is very capable of writing these statements. And is there some sincerity between the lines? I I'm sure there's some. But there's sure also is. some desperation going on here because he and his team are now trying to salvage his reputation and more important, his marketability, which they have, th they have positioned him beautifully, perfectly, as almost a marketing icon now. And all of a sudden, that took a huge hit. Mr. Cover of Madden. And I got to tell you, I, I am I'm going to say this again. I'm seeing two Odell's operating here. There's a little Jekyll and Hyde going on, or as in Sunday's game, a little hide your eyes when he goes completely out of control because he's gone out of control before. End of last year, he had a couple of personal fouls. We just went over the edge. And I'm going to repeat what our man Ryan Clark, who was a mentor to this young man before we even knew who Odell Beckham Jr. was in his first year at LSU. Ryan took him under wing. And remember, Ryan played for LSU, bleeds purple and gold. And Ryan said that last year when he played in his final NFL season for the Redskins, that Odell Beckham Jr. was the first ex-LSU player alum, you know, like, like somebody he's connected to, that he wanted to fight on the field because Odell talks so much junk, just constantly spewing out junk on the field. Just, just, you know, it's just the typical trash talk, but he just can't stop talking, according to Ryan Clark, who loves this kid. So, so he has a, a, a reputation on the field that I think a lot of fans were not aware of. So we had the quote a couple of days ago from Michael Irvin. Another one of his new mentors. He's got Ray Lewis. He's got Dion. He's got Shaq has Michael his Shaq. back. Shaq's has got his, his back. back. Everybody's got his back. Yep. And this is all smart plays on the part of the Beckham team because you want all those guys behind you. Yep. But Michael Irvin said, I don't think I've ever really seen the animosity towards a receiver ever in this league right now as what's going towards this young kid. Well, Michael, do you know he's bringing at least some of it on himself, talking that much, that the way he talked even as a rookie, that he incited Ryan Clark, an LSU ex, to want to fight him on the field? And Ryan was just dumbfounded by it when he told me this story off the air. He said, I, I, I couldn't help myself. I wanted to lay my hands on the kid because he's just out of control, okay? So, so let's factor that in here, that finally he, the kid who's played on the edge, and maybe this fuels him. We don't doubt his greatness now, but, but he plays on the edge and sometimes a little over the edge. Skin can be a little too thin. Do I think the brandishing of the bat by the practice squad player and street clothes on the sideline before the game sent him over the edge? I find that hard to believe, but that's what Brad Wing, another ex-LSU kid who's the punter for the Giants, that's what he said sent him over the edge. I don't know about the insults. I don't know about the slurs. I don't know what pushed the button, but some button got pushed that cannot ever again get pushed with this kid if he wants to be great. And he's got the potential to be great, but this is a hard lesson that he's learning here, and I hope he's taking it to heart. Because sometimes in front of the media, he says all the right things, then he doesn't do the right things on the field. Well, Skip Bayless, let me throw a couple of things at you because I'm interested in your perspective with what I'm about to say. Number one, you're Odell Beckham Jr. There's a legitimate discussion about whether or not you're the best wide receiver yep. in the entire National That's Football correct. League. Yeah. Okay? Even though I'm thinking Antonio Brown at this moment. How the okay. hell do you let a practice player get into your head? I don't know. He's a practice player. I'm going to take you out He's with a practice bat. player. He's not going to I mean, come on the, the field I mean, and take I'm you just out. Saying, what, 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 what you going to do? I mean, <laughs> are you going to walk up to me in warm-ups? Because you, we ain't practicing. This is right. Sunday. We, we about to play, and you ain't even in uniform. What, what is this How like? are you a practice player, was it and like you're going to get into... Was it like Tanya Harding or somebody? Right? Stop that. That's what it's saying. He's feisty. He's here on I mean, come on now. I mean, that don't make any sense. That's point number one. Okay. That's point number one. Point number two, Skip Bayless, is this. Think about any of us. You, Molly, you, Skip, mm -hmm. me, et cetera. 
Like, you know, you met my boy Jeff. Yeah. You know, you ain't meet you ain't we meet heard you ain't meet members of my crew. Yeah. That, 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 that's yeah. right. That's right. You ain't you, you, you may not Jeff. have met my crew, my, my crew from Hollis, Queens. You may not have met my, my boys from Winston Salem State. But the fact of the matter is I got a whole bunch of Jeffs in my life. You mess up. Yo, Steve. That ain't the way to go, bro. You messed up. Yeah. You know, and guess what you got to do? You got to go in the air and be like, I messed up. Period. It's like Shaq, Michael Irvin, not Ryan Clark, because Ryan Clark broke it down. But all of these people coming to Odell Beckham Jr.'s defense. They are. For what? For what? I'm just, I'm just saying, but, but for what? I mean, it's like if it, he's either right or he's wrong. Mm -hmm. So when people are sitting there saying, well, you know what? He, he was out of control. Well, we're talking about Sunday. Nobody's talking about his life. We don't know no, his life. Not about we don't his particular, life. And, no. and, 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 if and if we're decent, and if we're decent, respectable human beings, we don't care. As long as this brother ain't breaking the law, live your life. Nobody cares. We're talking about what happened Sunday. So everybody that's willing to jump to the defense of Odell Beckham Jr., well, the second you say that you don't validate, you don't condone his actions on Sunday, right there you need to shut the hell up. Why? Because you've admitted that you don't condone what you saw, which is what we're talking about. Everybody has tried to make this into something more than what it was. Your behavior on Sunday contributed to you blowing a game against the undefeated Carolina Panthers, and it might have eviscerated your playoff hopes as a, you know, for the New York Giants. That is what happened. That is all that we're talking about. Anything else has been exacerbated by Odell Beckham Jr. and his crew. And you got to remember, Michael Irvin, that's the playmaker. That's my man. We go back a long ways as he does with you. I mean, Shaquille O'Neal, come on now. You know that's my brother. Let's, let's be clear. Well, you know how tight. That, but the point is, everybody that's so willing to jump to the defense, all you're doing is highlighting how you're trying to explain away the inexplicable. You should not have done what you did Sunday. I don't care about what you're doing with your personal life. I don't care about all this other stuff. I care about the fact that you put yourself in a position where you embarrassed yourself, you came across as selfish, and you helped blow a game that Sunday. Okay. That's it. All right, bottom That's line, it. quick thought. Has he cost his team the game at Minnesota on Sunday night? Yes. I say yes also. I say yes too. Okay, we got I three really yeses. I really hope it's an isolated incident. I really do. This I was really excited about, Skip. I know you don't want help in any of your debates, but the writer of one of my favorite shows, the hottest shows out there, Game of Thrones, has your back. And he watches our show, Stephen A. George R. R. Martin saying on his wow. blog, this morning on first take, Stephen A. Smith and Skip Bayless agreed that Beckham should be suspended for his actions yesterday. I can't disagree. But Bayless also said that the officiating crew should also be suspended. And boy, do I agree with that. You you know, I got a second it because, of course, I wow. wanted the officials to get involved, yes, so he'd did. be playing Sunday. Skip, I don't know if you know how huge the show is. But I do. I, I'm, I'm pumped that, he, that he's I a know. fan. Thanks to you and Brian Bork of our staff, I know. And I'm honored well, by that, Mr. R. R. Martin, and we extend an open invitation to you to come sit with yes. us on the show and talk Giants, Jets, or whatever pushes your button. And bring Khaleesi. I you don't guys, know, You, guys, well, you guys will well, thank well, me for that. Hold on, hold okay. on, hold on <laughs> with, with, with y'all pom pom on. Hold on, okay? The Game of Thrones is a great, phenomenal show. He deserves to be applauded for that. Yes. And I definitely co sign with Skip Bayless that he is welcomed on the show. But to Mr. George R. R. Martin, <laughs> Work on your next show. I don't give a damn that you agree with Skip Bayless. You understand what's wrong with you? I you love shouldn't this have man. agreed with him anyway. Yeah. Okay? I, I mean, come, on, come, come on now. Yeah. I, I don't care. He's welcome to come on the show. Don't yeah. sit there and just tweet out about it. Come on into the big house, all right, and, 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 and explain yeah. yourself mm. more further than right. a 140-character yeah. tweet. And yeah. then maybe I'll take you seriously. Yeah. This ain't Game of Thrones. Too. Yeah, right. what you okay. don't understand, this right, man is clean. a genius, and he knows genius yeah, so you, when he hears genius. You all should be scared, actually. No, He's a genius on. when it comes to making television shows, <laughs> yeah. all right? Not commenting on you. Yes, he is. Clearly. Yeah. Hopefully, Clearly. Hopefully we see Thank him you, on Mr. Here. Martin. Yes, yes, yes. Merry Winter Christmas. is coming, Whatever. for those of you that get that reference. Yeah. Coming up, a rematch of the NBA Finals headlines the Christmas Day slate. The players are downplaying the rematch, but are Skip and Stephen A. We'll tell you that after the break. Stay here. It's first take.